joins us. Um, basically, um, fair housing is getting a lot of attention. Um, lately in the news, uh, housing wire and, and other things. In fact, um, I actually sit on the um, Fair Housing Commission or committee for Michigan Association of Realtors. And it's not just realtors right now. Excuse me, I gotta tell Alexa to be quiet. Echo, stop. Echo, stop. She's trying to decide what she's gonna do. All right. Um, and again, there's a number of cases that have that have come forth recently, and even some appraisers now um, are under the gun because of what um, sellers are contending are um, open discrimination by the seller uh, or not by the, by the appraiser. In other words, where they're getting their comparables from. And um, so it's not just realtors right now that we have complaints coming forward. It's also on appraisers and Oakland County seems to be the area of target, um, which I find it fascinating. But Fair housing is huge. Um, I'm gonna play a, a couple of videos that I got um, just to, you know, gotta do its thing here. And again, these videos are something that we can all put on our, our social media pages and whatnot. Um, they're free, they're at NAR. Quick download and then a little bit of history. As we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act, let us rededicate ourselves to assuring that the promises of the act are reality and that the promises extended to groups not fully protected from discrimination. To achieve that goal, we must take action to oppose and challenge discrimination when it occurs and advocate for specific language in the act to protect the LGBTQ community from housing discrimination. We must also focus on educating how equal opportunity in housing is directly connected to health, education, and economic opportunity. You know, our zip code is our destiny. The zip code that you grow up in is going to determine how high you're going to climb the social ladder and the economic ladder in our country. If we don't have quality schools within a neighborhood, if we don't have a chance for social advancement within a neighborhood, then the homes that people invest in within those neighborhoods are not going to increase in value and not allow them to leave a legacy for the next generation. Discriminatory housing practices create racial and economic segregation in communities. That can lead to disparate outcomes in overall quality of life. Fair housing supports developing racially and economically diverse communities and expands access to greater life opportunities. Each of us has a role to play. What can you do? Redouble your efforts to understand fair housing laws and how your actions, words, and understanding of the issues impact housing choice. It's important to take action to oppose discrimination so it doesn't continue years to come, generations to come. And, and there's many ways to do it and we should be all made aware on the steps to take when we do face discrimination and how to take action. When you see discrimination, challenge it, report it, Engage in community dialogue and debate about the issues tied to housing choices, like schools, healthy communities, gentrification, and economic opportunity. Be informed and take action to expand protections to new groups experiencing discrimination today. We know that we have half the population living in states that have protections for people who identify themselves as LGBTQ or gender identity, but it's only half the states. It's imperative that we come together as a country that there are protections in place for everyone, whether you're black, white, Asian, a millennial. Uh, it does not matter. Everyone should have the same rights in terms of being able to own a home or being able to rent a home. As Realtors, we don't just sell homes, we sell communities. And the reality is that everything that we do really ties into the overall economic vitality and viability of a given neighborhood. And we, as Realtors, play an important part in home ownership. I mean, it's the cornerstone of our society. There's obviously still work to do. Call on members of Congress to change the Fair Housing Act to prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. By protecting the rights to housing, 
free from discrimination for all people, the Fair Housing Act preserves and advances opportunities for everyone. It's time for all realtors to take ownership of fair housing rights, to challenge discrimination, and ensure the promise of the Fair Housing Act. Fair housing. Fair housing. Fair housing makes us stronger. Now, one of the comments that gentleman made was the fact that we don't just sell homes, that we sell community. I think even more than that, we sell dreams. Um, and that's a huge, huge piece. And regardless of what our own personal biases or opinions are, as when we put on that mantra that we are a realtor, we have to put all of those things aside and be careful of the footsteps that we take so that we don't appear to be biased. Um, in any fashion or way. And so I've got, I'm gonna start out by asking five questions, which three of them are for sellers and two of them are for buyers. And it, they're pretty, um, pretty open-ended questions, which when you first read it, it, it seems pretty simple. But I believe that as a homeowner, I have the right to sell my own home. But a local broker told me I could not sell my home for the required price to the person I want. The question is, is that true? Now, on, it, on its face value, we would all just say, well, yeah, what the broker is saying is, is, or no, what the broker is saying isn't true, that you can just sell your house to whoever you want. But Fair Housing prohibits sellers who utilize real estate brokers or forms or of advertising from your refusing to use, sell, or rent. There is currently a case in Howell, Michigan, where a seller um is accused of um being biased they actually um turned down an offer after they found out who the buyer was and in turn those buyers filed a suit and of course when they file a complaint and they file a suit if there's basis for their um findings it actually goes to federal court what's currently happened in, in Howell is the fact that with this actually happened during COVID and it's still tied up in court. The seller has not been able to sell their home and move on simply because of the allegations sitting in federal court and their inability to be able to get court time. What happens if they lose? I don't know. I know what happens to realtors, but I don't know what happens to sellers. Area of liability. A seller or owner who discriminates on the basis of anything in all reality, they're in direct violation of the law. Imagine that. So actions to take. Be sure that you actually finish that, that response to that seller. Okay, make sure that they understand that there can be no discrimination basis of race, color, religion, sex, familiar status. It doesn't matter if they got a thousand kids or no kids. And this is really important, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in just a minute. So, suggested response is you have the absolute right to sell your home to anyone at your required price, as long as you don't discriminate. I mean, that's the full statement. Okay. Again, seemed like a pretty easy question going into it. Let's go look at the second one. Could you call and tell me who you're showing the house to? Seems pretty easy, right? I actually had one client who wanted me to be present for all um, showings because she was certain that people were only gonna come to her house to see what was inside and they were gonna um, plan to come back and take things from her or there was people that she wanted not to come and I told her I couldn't do that. I, while I could be present for all showings, I cannot deny based on a name or based on a person um, and she didn't like that. But I told her, if I'm going to list your home, that's the only choice I have because I cannot discriminate. And um, long story short, after a period of time, um, I let her go free of the contract because I just felt like I was going to be ensnared into a trap and I didn't like where it was going. By law, all people may purchase property regardless of their race, color, religion. Again, we all know these things. And, we, and it just, it may baffle you, it may surprise you that it's still in existence today, but the sad truth is, um, it is. And even though they've done some undercover studies in um, 
like New York is probably the most famous one because it's the most recent one that was three years in length, but it's it, discrimination exists in our own backyards. Um, and again, we review that at the state level, which just continues to blow my mind. Area liability. A seller who wants to screen home buyers may be intending to discriminate on the basis of race, color. We don't know, but if they make a statement, we need to ask more questions. Because just like I got to the point where I was very uncomfortable with this client, I, I reached a point where I had to walk away. I had to release her of the contract because I just wasn't going to um, have my actions come into question. So I'll be showing your home to give them the name. The seller responds with concern. Well, you know what? It comes back to, please remember that it is unlawful to screen or otherwise discriminate against home buyers on the basis of race, color, religion. They're selling their home. Does it really matter? I mean, are they worried about what the neighbors think or are they worried about who's, to, I, I don't get it. I just, you know, it's funny. I grew up in a neighborhood where we are the white folks in the neighborhood and we are the odd ones. Um, so I, I'm just baffled by today. Are these home buyers really qualified? Now, here's a question that we oftentimes do get asked, you know, because you got multiple offers and you're trying to present them all. And so they're looking at this one. And they say, are these people really qualified? Well, while it can be legitimate, we have to also understand the, um, the meaning behind it. In other words, um, what we need to look at when we're presenting a multiple offer or presenting an offer, be very careful when you start saying that um, conventional is better than FHA or that, you know, our old mantra that cash is king. Be certain that you take all things into consideration when you're presenting the offers. If you have any concerns with regard to this FHA offer or this rural development or this VA, even the conventional, why wouldn't you just call out and reach out to that mortgage company and, and find out what's going on? It amazes me that people don't wanna to sell to veterans because they think it's gonna take longer or because they think the house is gonna appraise for less or there's gonna be all this money tied up into um, repairs. There's a lot of myths that surround FHA and um, VA loans. They don't have any money. That's why they're going that way, which may or may not be true. But we stereotype and we just automatically do it. And we're not doing ourselves any favor. Um, and again, it could come back and hit us in the, in the face directly. So be careful when you're presenting offers. Pre present them in a fair um, value and um, let the seller make that decision. And then it's on the seller and not on your shoulders. Be sure of the advice that you're given. So let's get a couple of questions. Oh, I gotta finish this. Um, any appropriate conduct or comment by you could lead the seller to apply discriminatory qualification criteria. I guarantee you that every case that comes forward where the allegation is whether from the seller or from the buyer, they always identify the agent and they always identify the broker in addition to the party involved. Why? Because we live in a legalistic society today and they want a piece of us. And if they throw out the broad brush and they can get us sucked into it, the chances of getting paid are greater. Be extremely sensitive to this question because it may be prompted by fears. Respond to the question with a description of the process. Again, uh, on the average right now, VA loans are closing in 29 days. That's, that's fantastic. Conventionals are closing in anywhere between 14 and 21 days. Again, fantastic. But the old mantra that it's going to take 60 or 90 days to get through the process is no truism today. So be careful when you are explaining the benefits of each offer that you put forward. It is my responsibility to present you all offers. You know, I've worked with some agents. If I, I just know that if I would have contacted that seller, that I just know that agent didn't present an offer or two. Um, you just 
you, when you're dealing with those agents, you just get that ooey gooey feeling that I hope I never deal with those people again. Are there high quality schools in the area? Oftentimes I read listing verbiage that says highly sought after schools, great schools, um, preferred schools. Did you know you can't say that? Many of the suits filed in cases that have gone to trial, which allege racial steering involve comments by sales associates about schools. This is huge. I cannot overstate. And again, this whole lesson, while we can all take it on um, C21 online, because that's where the content comes from, it's absolutely amazing um, how many of us unknowingly violate this one piece and the number of cases that come forward. So you say, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, understand what your liability is, okay, with regard to you commenting on the schools and understand, again, we're living in a, in a state which has um, school of choice. So there are lots of options, but the reality is, is you wanna direct them to how can they get the answers? You know, there's websites, there's, um, and again, there's all kinds of free information out there and there's other people that can give them the insight and the advice and it's not hard to find, but the easiest thing to do, just have them call the school. School's going to tell them straight up, you know. Um, it doesn't. It, and what I'm saying is, is remove yourself from that that possible contention that you can find yourself ensnared in very quickly. One more question: Would you live here? What a concept! Ever been asked that question before? Would you live here? Well. Again, they often get that question gets asked. And so then it's like, well, no, I wouldn't even consider it. Um, then they dig for more, make sure that it's got nothing to do again with um, anything that could be used against you in a court of law. Well, they say that CYA, cover your backside. If you suggest anywhere in there that it's got anything to do with race, color, religion, or anything to do with that community, to make up that community, one, don't be surprised if you're actually being tested. And I say that because there are testers that are going out here in the state of Michigan. And one of the surprising things about testers is if you didn't know, when you are being tested, while you may get that gut feeling, you say, are, are you testing me? Whether they are a tester or not, they do not have to acknowledge or let you know that they are in fact a tester. It's not, you know, and that that's huge. The fact that you even ask them if they're a tester, I think their radar would go up, but they don't have to tell you. So why ask the question? Just present yourself the best that you could present yourself. Give your honest opinion, whether it's positive or negative to this question. There it is, plain and simple. For me, it's pretty easy. Um, my response because no there are none of the houses in that area are, are big enough for my size of my family i'm one of those um one of those weird people where as my family um grew and um we left our family home where we raised so many of our kids we actually had to move to a bigger house instead of downsize because with all the grandkids and all the spouses and everything else we couldn't get everybody in the house anymore and so I had to get, we had to move it to a house twice the size to try to get everybody in. Crazy, right? But true. Anyways, create advertisements with fair housing in mind. There's a lot of legalistic crap in this. Okay. And regardless of whether you're doing it on um, just on the MLS, whether you're doing it on Facebook, whether you're doing it on LinkedIn or Twitter, whether you're creating TV ads, whether it's AdWorks, Whatever it is, whatever means that you're putting out there, and especially when you're thinking about um, your um, your ver your your listing to verbiage, focus on the property and its amenities. Don't focus on the buyer. Don't focus on the renter. Don't focus on any of that. Focus on 
there's schools nearby or there's parks nearby. But don't focus on that they're the desired schools or the preferred schools. Just focus on uh, the close proximity and the advantages of why this home is ideal or this neighborhood is ideal. One of the things that I, I, I'm coming across more and more is there's a lot of um, with next door, um, next door neighbor. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but it, it's, um, it's an online thing where people interact um, by neighborhood and by area. And it's kind of neat because when people have a need, it's amazing the outpouring of support that comes through next door neighbor. So if you haven't investigated it, don't be surprised that if you have something like that in your own area, and um, it's just a great resource to get in there and uh, meet your neighbors. Did you know that there's 67 words to exclude from listings? And this is taken right from real comp. You can't say able body. You can't say adult living. You can't say adults only. You can't say one child. You can't say number of children. You can't even say newlyweds. Did you know that? If you don't find it surprising, then you're smarter than I am by far because physically fit, really? I can't, I, I can't do that. No alcoholics, really? These are protected classes and these are empty nesters. I mean, I'm just, I'm totally shocked and surprised. Um, no unemployed, really? No mentally ill. I guess I don't qualify for that neighborhood. Um, no deaf, no crippled, no drinkers, must be employed. Really? No seasonal workers? If you're not familiar with these 67 words that these words were actually in listing verbiage, public comment. And what will happen if you use any of these words is you'll probably get a, a email from RealComp that tells you that you have 48 hours to correct it. And if you don't correct it within 48 hours, then you'll be fined. And you get fined per day until you get it taken care of, period. Same way with board approval required up there, HOA or something within uh, apartment complex if you do with leases and stuff at all. Married, mature couple. I find so many of these to be surprising. Um, again, like mosque. What if it's close to a mosque? I guess you don't want to mention it. But it, what's not there isn't temple. Church isn't there. Mosque is there. Why? I, I don't know why those 67 words are selected. I just know they are. So in all reality, if you have any questions with regard to um, your advertising, go back to the premise what focusing on the amenities and focusing on the home but do not focus on the buyer and the seller per se focus on oh can we say family friendly no we can't not anymore i'm, I'm reading some of the chat comments can you can confirm va has a huge stigma yeah it's absolutely amazing um recent was a VA seller actually agreed to a VA over a conventional. Perfect. I love that. Watch the rental properties or for lease. Yes. I have buyers with young children. They're always interested to know if your other young children to play with is inquiring about kids of violation. Again, you can direct them to if I'm assuming you're in a community or in an area where you're familiar or you can actually um, I can that's a great question, but you can direct them to um, what is the makeup of that neighborhood. Um, it's again, even I hate to say it, but even Zillow has some things on it with regard to the makeup of the neighborhood. Um, and while I don't really like to use Zillow, it's 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 out there. Um, some of the tools that currently the blue side has that is coming your guys's way will also make that much, much easier. I can't wait until uh, Moxie hits the C21 brand because it not only does CMAs rather quickly for you, 
but it also tells you where the buyers are, but it gives you all that kind of data, which is absolutely cool. So again, um, driving around, that's, that's great advice. Tell them to drive around the neighborhood of, of choice and look, looking for kids and whatnot. Um, great, I love it. Um, and some of the homes I sell there, the number, color of cabinets, that's amazing. <laughs> um, I, I can't imagine why you would get in trouble for describing the cabinets, but then again, we live in a legalistic society, don't we? We truly do. So let me go here. Um, oh, there we go. One of the things that I'm, I think is going to come as a shock and a surprise to you, because and I want to get to it. Um, again, know the guidelines in your area. This is all. There's a lot of content here. I know that you. I could send the content out so you can review it if you want. Um, it's all available on C21 online as well. It's also available at NAR. But I want to get to this love letters or liability letters. When buyers are really sincere or you're trying to make your buyer look like they're the perfect buyer, you know you're in a multiple um, bid situation, and then you say, you know what, how about writing a letter that I can give to the seller? Be careful with that. Because this is all next to um realtors making comments relative to schools this is actually the newest uptick complaints coming um about letters because buyers are alleging that they heard that a, a seller was offered letters from another buyer and that that buyer or that seller selected those people based on the letter and discriminated, discriminated against them. Whether it's real or not, who's, how do you answer that? So if you have your buyer write a letter or if you have letters that come and you have them to give to your um, seller, the guidance is don't read them. You don't read them. If you get letters and if you get photos and everything else, and you want to provide that information as a service to your seller, go for it. But don't read him and don't look at the pictures so you're unfamiliar with the content. And as long as you're unfamiliar with the content, you can remove yourself from any of the biases or opinions that the seller may have. You understand that, that process? No knowledge. But um, like I said, schools, making references to schools and making references to love letters right now are the, are the two areas that are targeted too greatly, in my opinion. It has been more than 50 years since America passed the Fair Housing Act, but we have far more work to do to eliminate discrimination in real estate. Welcome to Fairhaven a new fair housing learning experience from NAR. Fairhaven simulated scenarios will challenge you to confront bias in yourself, in clients, and in other real estate professionals. After your trip to Fairhaven, you'll see the world differently and you'll be better prepared to tackle discrimination in real estate. Fairhaven, the next stop on your fair housing journey. Now Fairhaven, um is an online thing. You're, um, all I can, I, I, I'd like to strongly encourage everyone to take it. Admittedly, even myself, um, I didn't get all the answers right the first time through. I took their situations. I responded in the in the way that I thought the answer should be. Found out that I was wrong. It helped re-educate me and it helped direct me. Um, to get to the correct answer. Um, and it was amazing. I, I, I really, I was absolutely impressed. Fairhaven, that realtor, um, go there. It'll take you anywhere, depending on how fast you read and answer, anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour. Um, but the education that you receive is huge. Um, and like I said, fair housing 
is getting a lot more attention today. Well, in fact, look what President Biden just did with uh, Freddie, May, Freddie and uh, Fannie with regard to trying to increase the number of households. And, and we all know from our own profession, the higher the concentration of um, owner hold homes in a neighborhood adds value to it. But as the neighborhood starts to become more and more um, saturated with rentals, there's oftentimes a tendency that the neighborhoods aren't as well maintained. We can all relate to that, but we still have to be careful how we approach that. And that's what I, again, Fairhaven.realtor, um, go visit it, you know, take the time to do it, amaze yourself. Um, maybe you'll do better than I did and you'll actually get through it without any mistakes. If you do, would you let me know? Because <laughs> um, I ain't the bread, I ain't the sharpest pencil in the drawer, but like Larry, I try every day to get there. All right. So um, that concludes today. Oh, I got one more item in the chat. In the listing, we are allowed to name the school. Yes. Yes, you are absolutely allowed to name the schools. And it's a good thing because then when you do name the schools, they actually have the ability to go Google them and then find out their own information on the schools. Um, and like I said, the other thing is next door neighbor. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with it, go Google it, check it out, see if it's in, active in your area. It works on your phone and it works on the computer both. Um, and if your community is anything like the community around here, you'd be amazed at how helpful some people can really be. All right. So till next time. Hey, Bob. Peace thank you very out. much. Appreciate you putting yep. this on for us. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for participating. <laughs>